Hi there my magical star beings, this is Psychic Siren Tarot and welcome to the channel. In today's reading we're going to be taking a look at what people have heard about you through the grapevine. So in this reading we're going to be uncovering the tea that's said about you and heard about you through the grapevine. But before we get started with your pile selection, I want to give a quick shout out to my sponsor Key. So this is how my best friend almost ruined my relationship. It started with a missed call from Emily on my boyfriend Kyle's phone at a weird time. Then I saw a missed call from Kyle on Emily's phone as well. I wondered why they'd call each other while I'm at work. My heart raced, I trust them, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I felt uneasy about Emily before. A year ago, I noticed how she and Kyle seemed to click, sharing jokes and glances that made me uncomfortable. Once I even caught Emily smiling at a message from Kyle, and when I asked him about it, he said it was private. I just dismissed it as paranoia due to my trust issues, but the doubt lingered. The new incident made my old suspicions resurface. Kyle became more secretive, always on his phone, which was unusual for him, and Emily started cancelling plans last minute, which wasn't like her. Everything seemed off, and my anxiety grew. I confronted Kyle about the call, but he brushed it off as a mistake. But when I asked Emily, she said she didn't even remember calling at all. Their vague answers made me even more anxious. I needed to know the truth, so that's when I decided to consult with a tarot reader from Keen. I browsed Keen's website, searching for the right psychic for my situation. I found one specializing in relationship readings with great reviews. But it was her energy that caught my attention, so I decided to consult with her, hoping she could reveal the truth. I explained my fears and asked for clarity. As she began typing, I just felt annoying anxiety, fearing the truth I might hear. She told me the cards speak of betrayal and my stomach dropped. Then she added, but they also speak of celebration, a union of hearts. Confused and frustrated, I asked, what does that mean? Her vagueness felt like torture. The truth lies in what you choose to see. The betrayal may not be what you think. Sometimes the heart sees what it fears, not what is real, she responded. I left the chat more confused than ever. Over the next few days, her words echoed in my mind, turning every interaction with Kyle and Emily into something sinister. The final straw came when I saw Kyle and Emily together at a coffee shop, speaking in hushed tones. They didn't see me, but I saw enough to confirm the worst. I left in tears. Back home, I felt broken. How could they betray me? But as I paced around, the tarot's words returned to me. Celebration? Union of hearts? Could there be another explanation? The next day, I decided to confront them. I know something's going on, I blurted out. Just tell me the truth. Kyle and Emily exchanged a glance, then smiled. We were going to tell you tonight, Emily said softly. Tell me what, I demanded. Kyle pulled out a small velvet box. We've been planning a special anniversary surprise for you. Our three-year anniversary is next month. Emily helped me because you trust her taste more than mine. My mind reeled as everything fell into place. The strange calls, the secret meetings, the cryptic conversations. It was all for me. I felt a flood of relief and guilt. The tarot's words made sense now. The betrayal was actually my own mistrust, twisted by my fears. I hugged them both, tears streaming down my face as the weight of doubt lifted. They've been planning something beautiful for me, not against me. So I realized that sometimes trust means choosing to see love, even when fear blinds you. I hope you enjoyed that little nugget of my personal life, and if you've had thoughts about something you need clarity on, Keen connects you with talented psychics, tarot readers, and astrologers, available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, so you can get a reading whenever it suits you. Just create an account, and you'll be able to choose from the hundreds of readers who are online right now. Each reader has unique gifts and specialties, so whether you need insights on love, career, or life in general, they can provide deeper understanding and guidance. 
Choose whichever reader best suits you and you'll be able to connect with them via phone call or text chat. It's always best to get a personal psychic reading if you'd like more accurate information on your situation because it is directed only to your energies. Now, here's your chance to get a personalized reading from Keen. As a new customer on Keen, you can try your first five minutes for only one dollar. Go to trykeen.com slash psychic siren tarot or click the link in my description box below to receive a discount on your first reading. Thank you Keen for bringing this partnership opportunity and for sponsoring today's video. That's trykeen.com slash psychic siren tarot or click the link in my description box below to get your own personalized reading today at a huge discount. So getting back to your pile selection. We have three piles to choose from. For pile number one, you have the crystal howlite. For pile number two, you have flower agate. And for pile number three, you have lemon chrysophase. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to pick a pile. Pick whichever one you are most drawn to. Once you're done picking a pile, please find the timestamps for your pile in the description box below and then I'll see you at your reading. Hi there my pile number ones, if you chose the Howlite Crystal then this is your reading. We're going to be taking a look at what people have heard about you through the grapevine. Please be aware that this is a general reading, so only take what resonates, leave the rest. If you do find yourself resonating with these messages, then please go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you'd like to book a personal reading with me, I do have a limited amount of space available. I'm almost fully booked for November and that's my last month of doing readings. So if you don't want to miss out, please find my email address in the description box below. So I've already shuffled your cards. You have the King of Swords, the Eight of Swords, the Two of Wands, Queen of Wands, the Sun, the Empress Reverse, the Ace of Pentacles, Two of Cups, Two of Pentacles, Ace of Swords, and at the back of the deck you have the Nine of Wands. Okay, so the first thing I see in terms of what people have heard about you through the grapevine, I see somebody specific talking about you and I'm seeing it like, you know, the game of telephone where one person says something and then another person hears it and then adds things onto it or hears it wrong and then says it to somebody else and then the whole cycle goes on and on and on and then when you get to the end it's not even the truth anymore um so I'm hearing something like that there was someone specific that started this all where there's something that people are hearing about you I'll get into what it is now I'm not exactly sure what it is yet but there's something someone said about you from a place of insecurity because they were feeling very insecure in themselves and they said something about you to another person and then that person went and told somebody else then that person went and told somebody else and that person went and told somebody else so people are hearing like different stories about you through the grapevine and they can't figure out which one is the truth and which one's not and they can't figure out if this is all just like a rumor or if it's really the truth or not because with the King of Swords, Eight of Swords, that's how I'm reading it. Like, I can't figure out if this is true or not because I'm hearing so many versions of the same story that come across differently. And now I'm, like, confused and I don't know which one's the truth when I'm hearing it from the grapevine, when I'm hearing it from people. So there's something about that coming through where um, the gossip on you is making people confused because they're hearing so many different versions of the same story that now they're not really sure which one is true. And it's reminding me of Mean Girls, um, the scene in Mean Girls towards the end where um, Regina like was hit by the bus and then some people said that she pushed her and some people said that, you know, she, the bus just hit her and then people didn't know which one to believe. It's kind of reminding me of that, but not as extreme. The rumor wouldn't be as extreme but it's just something that people are not sure of. So I'm going to ask Spirit to show me what this is exactly. Uh, so just give me a second. Bear with me, please. 
Okay, so Spirit is showing me a from Pretty Little Liars, and if you've ever watched Pretty Little Pretty Little Liars, um, it's kind of long to explain because there's a whole I don't know how many seasons of it, but anyways, long story short, there is this person named A that kind of like stalks the four girls, there's four of them, right? And um, sends them like text messages and things like that. So there is something about somebody almost like, maybe not physically stalking you, but stalking you on social media, maybe. And like trying to come up with things they say about you to make you almost like intimidated by them. Um, so whoever this is, this person's a mystery to you. You don't know who this is because in the series, they couldn't figure out who A was for so long in the series. Like they just didn't know who A was. And I feel like there is a specific someone that keeps speaking about you and causing this whole thing to happen, but you're not sure who it is as well. Maybe some of you have already heard some of the things that have been said about you, but you're just not sure who it actually is. I'm going to tap in more. So I'm seeing somebody drink a glass of wine and look outside of the window and sort of watch you. So I feel like that represents maybe this person watching you on social media or something like that. And it's like, I'm not getting a clear view of you. I'm not getting a clear view of like who you are or what you're doing in your life. And I'm just going off presumptions I'm making about you based off what I've seen and I don't think I'm doing anything bad because I think I'm telling the truth. But actually, like, I'm only seeing my side of how I see you. I'm not seeing you fully as I'm in this person's energy. So whoever this is, it's like they're saying things about you that they've assumed that they think is the truth, but is actually deeply rooted in their own insecurity. I see a lot of FOMO here. I see that this person really wants to be around you but doesn't like doesn't like know how to be around you if that makes sense so that could give you some clues into who this person is that started the whole thing um but let me try get what this is about so some of you people have heard that you recently got your driving license or a new car or something like that. I'm seeing something like about a car, right? And I'm seeing something about protection because they're showing me the angst spiritually, clairvoyantly, and they're showing me a mirror, like a magic portal mirror. So again, this person thinks they are telling the truth, but it's actually like um, whatever they're saying about you is more so a projection from themselves onto you. And you are protected energetically from that energy. And the mirror portal magic kind of mirror I'm seeing kind of reminds me of um, that movie. Was it Snow White? I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, sorry. But that movie where she's like mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all. And she's kind of like insecure because she's not the fairest of them all. So it's kind of reminding me of that. And that checks out with what I said about this person feeling insecure around you. So what has this person actually said? What have people heard about them from the grapevine as a result of this person speaking about them? I'm seeing a proposal. I'm seeing something to do with your love life. I'm seeing something to do with school, art, like if you're an artist. I'm also seeing um, people could hear about your style for, through the grapevine, like how good your style is. Okay, so uh, Spirit is not showing me exactly what it is because I think it could be different for all of you. But um, what Spirit is basically showing me is like this person thinks they're saying the truth about you, but they're not. So Spirit is showing me, imagine I just like picked up a book. I read the cover of it and now I'm telling people about this book in depthly as if I know 
as if I've read this whole book, but I haven't. And now people get the wrong idea of this book because I haven't actually read and I haven't actually read this book. Um, so there's something about that coming through. And Spirit is not showing me exactly what it is for each one of you because it could be different. But it just feels like I've said something about you that may not be a true representation of who you are as a result of just looking at the cover of you but not actually reading you, not actually getting to know you. So this is someone you don't know that well. Someone that hasn't actually taken the time out to get to know you. So what is being heard about you through the grapevine? I see that there's a lot of talk about your relationship with the two of cups. If you're in a romantic connection right now or if you're married, you know, people could be hearing a lot of things about that. Um, you know, if you have children at the moment, people could be hearing a lot of things about your family through the grapevine. I also see something about, you know, like problems you've been experiencing or um, just challenges you've been experiencing in general, as well as opportunities you've received, whether that has to do with like your career, your finances, um, any, any type of opportunity at all that you've received while you were feeling stuck, people could be hearing about that through the grapevine. So it depends on your connection, like what's said about the connection. Um, and again, like people are just saying what they see or a specific person is saying what they see, but it might not be true. So, you know, if you ever hear things about you that's been said, oh my gosh, we have the Ankhya, I didn't notice until now. So yeah, you are spiritually protected, but like if you ever hear things that were said about you, it's kind of like that game of telephone where when you actually hear it, you're like, what? Um, how did they come up with this? Where did they get this information? Because this is not even close to what's true. Um, they think it's true, but it's not true. It's merely just like assumptions or what I've seen from the outside that I'm talking about, right? So I see people hearing about your relationship or relationships in general. If you don't have any romantic connections in your life, then, you know, people could be speaking about past romantic connections you've had um, and friendships you have in your life right now. People could be speaking about your stability, your money. People could also speak about like and hear about like you seeming much happier lately with the sun, much more confident lately with the queen of wands. Some of you have had a glow up or a transformation internally where you seem a lot mentally happier. You seem less like challenged by life. You seem a lot more free nowadays. And I see people hearing about that through the grapevine. I see um, your stability being spoken about like maybe some of you had problems to do with money or stability and that was spoken about, but I do think things are improving in that area and you're becoming much more confident and happy in that area of life or wherever you are experiencing challenges, it's becoming a lot better. So that's what's also being heard about you through the grapevine. But there's many different sides to the stories that are being heard. Like we see with the ropes here, some people could hear this side, some people could hear this side, this side, this side. I hope that makes sense. I don't know how to, else to explain that, but that's what I'm getting. Is there anything else that I'm missing here in terms of what's being heard about them through the grapevine? Sing, uh, things seem to be flowing in your life right now, right? Um, in the right direction. And that's what's being heard about you. Um, it kind of feels like people are waiting to see what's happening next in your life. I'm seeing someone here could do ballet. I'm just seeing that for somebody. So that could be spoken about. It almost feels like I'm waiting to see what happens next in your life. Like... I'm sitting at a dinner table and I'm waiting to see what they have here. Um, so, you know, when you're sitting somebody somewhere at like a dinner table and then there's like a plate with something over it that covers the food and I'm waiting to see what's under this so that people can reveal this. 
Um, it kind of feels like people are waiting for things to be revealed in your life of like what happens next. So some people could be talking about certain things where they're like, okay, I'm not really sure about this yet. Um, we'll have to wait to see what happens next. And then I see the people hearing it being very intrigued and like looking at you on social media to figure out what could happen next. So that's interesting. Um, I hope this wasn't too vague. I did try my best to get messages on what's being heard about you through the grapevine. So I do hope this reading resonated with you. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi there my pal number twos, if you chose the flower agate crystal then this is your reading. We're going to be taking a look at what is being heard about you through the grapevine. So please be aware that this is a general reading, only take what resonates, leave the rest. If you do find yourself resonating with these messages then please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Also if you'd like to book a personal reading with me I'm taking my last bookings for November. I'm almost fully booked so if you don't want to miss out please find my email address in the description box below. So um, I've already pre-shuffled your cards. You have the Seven of Pentacles, the Knight of Swords, Six of Swords Reverse, Eight of Cups, Strength, the Magician, Eight of Wands, Knight of Pentacles, Extra Card with Ten of Swords, Ten of Wands, and Page of Swords. And at the back of the deck, you do have the Four of Wands. Okay, so I feel as though when I'm in the energy... Um, I shuffled the cards right and then I put them down and I organized them and I was waiting to say hi to you but then when I was about to say hi I started smelling a specific smell that instantly took me back to a childhood memory I had. Um, I don't know how to explain it because it's just like specific and personal to me but I had this bookshelf in my room as a child that always had like this pine coney smell like it had like a very like woody calming smell to it and that smell always reminds me of like my old room in childhood like that specific wood smell I don't have that specific wood smell in my current room um, but I started smelling that so it's making me think of childhood even with the page of swords here um, So maybe people could be hearing things about your childhood with the strength card being opposite that card I do think people could be hearing about maybe things you've been through in your life or things You've been through in your younger years that you had to stay strong through that you had to survive through and there is something about this being something hard to speak about for you, this being something that really took all your strength and resilience. Maybe there's something about feeling like leaving a situation with the Eight of Cups, but feeling almost stuck, feeling almost like, you know, I can't leave. Um, so there could be a situation where maybe some of you grew up in family homes that weren't maybe the most loving or maybe others of you had situations in your younger years where you really had to stay strong and you felt like just leaving that situation behind that was causing you so much pain but there were some problems there keeping you back there. So for example maybe some of you were married to a person um, that was toxic for you and you wanted to leave in your younger years but you couldn't because maybe you didn't have money of your own or maybe you had a child with this person and although you know we shouldn't stay with somebody just because we have a child with them like maybe you felt in that moment like I can't leave um, because this baby's still young you know something like that's coming through where you were in some type of situation, take it as it resonates for you, my examples don't have to resonate, that um, almost made you feel like I need to be strong in this situation. Even though it was very hard to go through and anyone being in that type of situation to the extent of what you've been through would have felt the same way, would have felt like leaving, would have felt like you know, going somewhere else. Um, but the circumstances didn't allow you to make that change in the beginning. 
until you found a way out of that situation, until you found a way to move out of that situation. Um, so maybe you couldn't leave the situation at first when you wanted to, but eventually you did. And I see that maybe there's something about people hearing from this person's side of the story that you... I, I feel like this person or whoever this is that like caused these problems for you is like making you the bad guy or the villain in their story like oh they just left I didn't do anything like I don't know why they left you know um, but they're not actually saying what they did to hurt you so I feel like this has to do with the person and I feel like there's something about people hearing through the grapevine from other people that you're finally happy now, that you finally got your happy, happily ever after, that you finally got what you wanted out of life right now. You're, you've gotten much stronger as a person and you seem to be like moving forward from this and like working through this emotionally, right? So I, I see people speaking about your past, the things you've been through and how you seem to be working through it right now. And I see a lot of people hearing about that. And even with the magician here and the fairy godmother, it reminds me of Cinderella when she was stuck in the house with, you know, her stepmother and the two uh, stepsisters and she was being treated so badly. And the fairy, the fairy godmother was the one that helped her um, the most within the film. So I feel like maybe some people are hearing about somebody that helped you work through the situation or about somebody that helped you move forward from the situation, somebody that really cared for you, someone that was almost like your fairy godmother in the moment. And if there was nobody there that helped you, then people could be hearing about that, saying, you know, someone should have helped you, someone should have like um, been there for you during that situation, like you needed that support. Maybe some of you, nobody came to save you and you had to save yourself. You had to step into the shoes of being your own fairy godmother uh, to work through the situation on your own. So I guess just take it as it resonates for you, like however it resonates for you, because it's not going to be the same for everybody watching. But you've been consistently moving forward from this. You've been trying to let go of whatever trauma is attached to this past memory of yours. You've been trying to just like move past it and not think about it too much anymore or not, not stay stuck in the past. But you've also been healing emotions surrounding the past um, where sometimes you do go back to it, not physically, but like mentally to try to get curious and understand it better, understand what you're feeling and all of that with the Page of Swords. So I do think that people are hearing that you're a very brave person for being able to leave a situation that was just making you feel um, challenged in some way, like life is so hard. You know, for some of you, it was to a toxic work environment. That's what I see for some of you. Um... And I just see people like speaking very highly of you and being so compassionate for you, like for whatever you went through here. And I see people being proud of you for how you've been able to move forward from the situation, get stronger and create some kind of new beginning in your life, new celebration. It seems like you've gotten what you wanted out of life. It seems like you were in a situation where life was so hard, life was so painful, but you completely changed life around for you by like working towards what you want in life and getting some of your wishes or dreams come true. Um, because the Nine of Cups was popping out, but a lot of you had to leave guilt behind of like, I'm leaving this behind, so I'm actually getting what I want, but I have to like leave guilt and shame behind for actually leaving because I'm hearing, um, I'm putting me first. I have to put me first and not feel guilty about it. So I, I guess people could be hearing about that and saying like you have nothing to feel guilty about because whatever the situation was, you know, you were just not thriving in the situation. You were barely surviving. You were barely okay. And people can see that you're doing much better now, now that you've moved forward from whatever the situation was that wasn't good for you. And that you have no reason to feel bad for it. You did what was best for you in the moment. And 
now you're literally thriving. Now it literally seems like you're getting what you want out of life. Now it seems like you're celebrating life. Now it seems like you're in a much better situation. So this is the gist of what people are hearing about you through the grapevine. Um, sorry if this reading was a little bit shorter, but I see it being based on like this one thing only. So I do hope this reading resonated with you. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi there my pile number threes. If you chose the Lemon Chrysophase Crystal, then this is your reading. We're going to be taking a look at what have people heard about you through the grapevine. Please be aware that this is a general reading, so only take what resonates, leave the rest. If you do find yourself resonating with these messages, then please go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you'd like to book a personal reading with me, I am taking my last bookings for November. I'm almost fully booked, so if you would like to book and you don't want to miss out, please find my email address in the description box below. So you have the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Wands reversed, the Nine of Wands, the Queen of Pentacles, the Ace of Pentacles, the Fool, the Four of Swords, Nine of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, and the Chariot. So it seems like what's being heard about you through the grapevine is you are going through some kind of big challenge in your life or many challenges in your life. And you felt as though you were losing some kind of motivation for what was about to happen next. Maybe you were feeling very restless and stressed out. The reason I say so is because this dog man is getting massage from this lady. So it's making me think of stressors along with the nine of wands. Um, and just like feeling very anxious and restless about what's going to happen in the future due to the problems you were experiencing in life. I see that for some of you, these problems had to do with your stability or not having everything you needed in life, uh, financially, if that makes sense. For a lot of you, it's financial, but for some of you, it could be other th something different than that, but something you felt as though you needed, like, it wasn't just a want for you. It was something you needed. And that's how I'm reading the energy. Although you wanted this in your life with the Nine of Cups, it felt to you as though if I don't have this thing, I'm not going to be able to like actually move forward with my life. Um, I don't know what that would be exactly for you, but you were experiencing some kind of challenge in some area of life and feeling very uninspired, very unmotivated, maybe felt like you were losing your spark or losing a part of yourself through life just being so hard and challenging. But then I see people hearing later on that, you know, you are overcoming these problems with the chariot, that you are like finding new beginnings, finding new opportunities that actually allow life to become easier for you. That actually allows you to get what you want out of life with the nine of cups. That actually allows you to feel peace again and not feel like so stressed out all the time. So people have heard through the grapevine that some kind of big opportunity came your way that allowed you to see that you can overcome these challenges, that allowed you to see that you can have that stability of your own, you can have what you need, you can have what you want in life, and that things aren't as hopeless as they may, as they once seemed, if that makes sense. So there's something about bringing back hope to something that felt hopeless. And that is what people have been hearing about you through the grapevine, that there's some kind of huge new beginning in your life that feels like your next big break, that feels like something that's going to change everything in your life. And this is something you've been wishing for. This is something you've been praying for. This is something you've been manifesting and wanting for a long time. And I do feel like you have made a lot of improvements in your life. You have improved a lot. You've overcome a lot that like these stresses of life, you've overcome it. You remain strong. And that's what's being heard about you through the grapevine. 
What's being heard about you through the grapevine is during this moment, you had to remain emotionally balanced. You had to remain calm, even though chaos was around you. And people are applauding you for that. People are proud of you for that. You had to almost detach from these hopeless um, emotions that you had and almost like stay strong and look forward to the future, even if you didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Even when you were in the darkness and you didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, it's like you had to keep going and keep moving forward and keep believing that something good can happen from this. And that belief that you had actually did allow things to happen for you. And if this hasn't happened yet, then this is a future energy I'm picking up on where something big is coming your way that is going to change everything for you, that's going to allow you to not feel stuck anymore, that's going to allow you to feel like, okay, I actually have stability, that's going to allow you to feel like, okay, whatever this big thing is that's coming into my life is almost like making a lot of my problems go away and um, helping me through my problems. So, yeah, I see some kind of big new beginning that is going to make you feel very happy if it hasn't yet happened already. If it has happened already, then people are speaking about like how happy you seemed when this thing happened for you. For some of you, it could be many different things that entered your life that gave you a sense of hope that gave you, yeah, like a sense of hope that, you know, things can get better um, that you can have happiness and joy, that you can have the things you want in life. And you just seem to be like, you seem to have found your spark for life again, your love for life again. You just seem much happier lately. Like you seem much more fulfilled lately. You seem much more peaceful lately. As, as a result of whatever this is that was brought into your life that has made things easier for you. So before we end off, I'm going to try to get more messages clairvoyantly, but this is all I'm getting right now from the cards. So is there anything else I'm missing in terms of what is being heard about them through the grapevine? There's something about cleaning up your life for somebody here, improving yourself, bettering yourself, making small changes in your life that have led to big changes. There's something about someone here really gaining a lot of knowledge um, and wisdom from these situations that really were struggles to you. I'm hearing you can have your cake and eat it too now. I'm seeing a key, so that to me represents an opportunity, a door unlocking, and I'm also seeing um, some kind of symbol for strength, and I'm also seeing... Um, a dream catcher, which to me represents like your worries and nightmares falling away and you finding peace again. So what I'm seeing clairvoyantly checks out with what I saw here in the cards. So yeah, I do hope this reading resonated with you. This is all I'm getting for you in terms of what is being heard about you through the grapevine. So yeah, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.